This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. and what he has done for us. But in those scriptures, you're never gonna see a saint turn and say, now that I'm up here in the second heaven, thank you, Jesus, just go ahead and keep your seat. I've got it from here. And I'm gonna go rumble with the principality of power. That is not in the text. And it is perilous to put it in there. Because we have been given ground warfare, God handles the air warfare. Now, in the ground warfare, let's go back to Ephesians 6 and 12. Because this is what's going on. Now, set this back into context. Every time the church would be, try to begin to thrive in Ephesus, you have these dudes that are going to start crying, great is Diana of, of, of the Ephesians. And, you, and, and they're basically, you know, that was war drums going on. If that, if that official... Had not, he, he began to bring up laws. Listen, there are laws and things that we deal with this stuff with. Can anybody make a legal allegation? Because it was turning into a lynch mob. And so the Apostle Paul, and let me know if you were in that city, and that was less than a decade ago, and that Christians are being persecuted in that city. Can you imagine family members? We have worshipped Diana ever since that we can even have memory of our, of our family. How dare you reject our God and go after this Jewish God? See, we forget about that dynamic going on in the entire New Testament. So much of what is in Colossians that we have relegated to Judaizing was actually paganizing. <laughs> it was family members saying, what are you doing keeping the Sabbath? What are you doing keeping these things? What do you want to, why are you trying to be a Jew? We forget about all that going on. And so there's this wrestling. And so he, re, he basically is reminding them in Ephesians, even those idol makers aren't your problem. You've got to love them and tell them about Jesus. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not the idol makers. We're not wrestling with the idol makers. We're not wrestling with those that want to pr protect their goddess and their goddesses. But against principality, against powers, against the rulers of, of darkness of this world, against wicked spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Now that Greek word there, to wrestle, that we're experiencing now in America. You see, the big problem is the church forgot that our culture is in a wrestling match with us because it is dominated by a principality of power and a ruler of darkness. And we're constantly wrestling to win lost souls. We're constantly wrestling to impede the advancement of darkness. In fact, what is salt and light in our culture is the body of Messiah. The reason why there were laws that were based upon the Word of God about marriage, protecting life, all these different things were in our laws was because of the influence of the church when America was founded. 
In fact, even the Masons have to confess that they had to build on top of what the great revival fires of Jonathan Edwards and others had done in America. Otherwise, we would not have been moral enough of a people to handle a democratic republic. That's why the left keep on trying to remove that republic out of it and make it into a pure democracy. Even the Greeks confessed that a democracy, a soul democracy without the, being the republic, it would crumble in on itself. And they want it to crumble in so that we can become a communistic state. But you constantly wrestle. That's why it takes the armor of God and the strategies of having the mind of Christ, having that helmet of salvation on, so that as I'm warring here on earth, and I am wrestling with those that are under the authority of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, I maintain the perspective that if I can, if I can pray and lead them to Jesus, they go from being an enemy to an ally. That's why in this, in, in, in this part of Ephesians, he talks about having the, the spear of intercessory prayer. And then he goes on, he says, now listen, the whole point of this is pray for me that utterance might be given unto me to expound the gospel, to have a voice in the public square, which is one thing they're trying to take away, which was ruled by the Supreme Court in the 1950s as illegal. So what Twitter and Facebook and all these mega corporations are doing, that has already been ruled by the Supreme Court because they are calling those digital boards public squares. Well, then the Supreme Court that you so esteem has already said you're breaking the law and you should be held accountable for it. That's a whole other situation. But we need to understand that we're constantly wrestling that every time that we try to get the gospel out, we try to get salt and light into the earth, there will be men moved by other forces to begin stopping that. And in America, we just have the attitude, this is a Christian nation, we've got this thing licked, and we're just going to sit down till Jesus gets back because we have our Willy Wonka golden ticket. And when we sat down, they kept wrestling those principalities and powers and rulers of darkness kept wrestling. And they took over our universities. They took over our public school systems. They got prayer out of school. They legalized the sacrificing of unborn children to the god Molech in America. And with every abortion, it empowers what they do. That's why they are so desperate. It's never been about women's health. Because that is a mill. Once that woman has an abortion, they spit her out the other side. No follow-up. They don't even, and they're fighting right now. If it was really about the woman, wouldn't you want those sinners to have hospital rights so that they can refer someone to a hospital in case something goes wrong? They spit them out the other side without a second care of medical, of medical coverage for that woman. It's about sacrificing the child. Plain and simple. That was done on the watch of the body of Christ in America because we quit wrestling. That's why the Apostle Paul tells us that we need to be vigilant. We need to bombard heaven with a request to back off the principalities and powers. Yes, we do need to stand our authority in Christ, but that is a first heaven task, not a second heaven task. And we even have people teaching people how to astral project into the second heaven to fight principalities and powers, teaching them how to fight dragons. But what you don't see, because this, this has kind of gone around already before. I've seen it in the body of Christ. They do spiritual mapping, then they begin praying against and attacking principalities and powers. Let me tell you something. That brought a lot of devastation to the body of Christ. It caused a lot of good men, their lives, a lot of ministries were destroyed because you walked up with a stick and you poked a grizzly bear. And all you have is a stick. And now it, a very ancient being, knows you and has a very long memory. But how many know there's one that he fears? His name is Jesus of Nazareth. And when we pray, that thing gets on Jesus' short list. And angels begin showing up because the saints are praying and seeking the face of God and seeking heaven. Proper protocols. In my book on unlocking the Neshach of God, I'm going to be getting into the protocols with each. There are protocols for dealing with watchers. 
And people are breaking even the protocols of dealing with demons. You don't get haughty, you don't get in the flesh, you don't mock. Because the moment you do, you're in their territory. If anybody had a right to mock a demon, it would have been Jesus, and you never see it. See, what these principalities and powers know is there's a judgment day coming. Let's go to Psalms 82. This is a prophetic psalm, and what's interesting, a lot of the psalms are more prophetic and have more to do with the end days than we realize. It was more than just the early Hebraic psalm book. In fact, what's interesting is Jesus actually quotes when this when they, they said, you say that you're the son of God. He says, because the rabbis were misusing Psalms 82, and they said they, had, they, they were going to be like Moses, that they could be as God to the people of Israel because of Psalms 82. And the punchline when Jesus confronted them about that is they were standing with the one who's the head of the divine council in Psalms 82, and he just judged them. The only one. So they're claiming membership to this crew when they didn't have it. And then they judged the one that was the only one that they had ever seen their entire lifetime that actually was a member of the council and head of the council. Starting in verse 1, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Now in Hebrew, what it reads is Elohim stands among the Elohim. So Almighty God is judging the Bnei Elohim, his divine council. And he judgeth among the gods. So all these principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that had become gods in the ancient world, the psalmist is declaring one day they're going to have to stand before Elohim and he is going to judge them. And God says, how long will ye judge unrighteously and accept the persons of the wicked, Salah? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do, the ju do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand, and they walk in their own in darkness. Which is showing us what these principalities and powers did at the Tower of Babel. All the foundations of the earth are moved out of course. How I many know that's coming in the book of Revelation? So this is attached to the book of Revelation. I have said, ye are gods, and all you are children of the Most High. All of you are B'nai Elohim. But he begins to pronounce judgment in verse 7. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now, there have been many commentators not understanding the dynamic of what's going on here, and so they talked about how that evil men rulers would one day die. That's not a judgment. Every man's going to die. It's appointed unto man once to die. You live long enough, you're going to die. So for a man, it's not really judgment, but it is for an immortal, which we're going to see in the book of Revelation here just in a minute. And then the prophet cries out, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Again, prophetic of what we see in the book of Revelation. Okay? There's a judgment coming for the principalities and powers. Revelation chapter 12. Let's start in verse 1. Now, some have thought that this is parenthetical, but I don't necessarily think the man-child here is... Jesus, I think it's something else God's going to do during the tribulation period because I don't see in, in biblical history where Israel was, was protected by, by the earth and flooding and everything else to protect her and whisked away into the wilderness. I, that, that, that has not happened. You cannot extract. This is something that's going to happen in the future. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars and her being with child travailed in birth to deliver and pained to, the, to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, the Nechesh, having seven heads and, and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And he drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and they did cast them to the earth. So here is where by the time we get to this place in history, one-third of the immortals follow Lucifer. This is not parenthetical. This is now taken tally that we're getting ready to separate who are the devils, who are gods. 
And so by that place in the war, one-third of the angels have fallen. Now, what I want to do is jump over to verse 9. Listen to what it's saying. And the great dragon was, because there's, there, there's coming a fight with Michael and these hosts. In fact, let me, let me just jump back uh, to verse 7. And there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought with his angels and prevailed not. So there is a second heaven war coming during the book of Revelation. You see, all humanity, like at the Tower of Babel, are going to reject God and they're going to follow the old gods. And God, has, God always has a, a, a sense of humor that's interesting. In Genesis 3, I've got Dr. Carl Koch, when he reads the Hebrew, he does not see Adam, where art thou, in the Hebrew. What he sees is they sinned, they're in the garden, and they're hiding, and Almighty God comes down and walks in the garden, and he says, Hey, Adam! How's that working out for you? Is literally what is being expressed in the Hebrew. And so when these principalities and powers fell at the Tower of Babel, God judges them and he judges what they're doing with man. And he says, you're going to die like men. And man's going to see who you really are. The Masons are going to see Baphomet. They're going to see Jabalon. They're going to see the Baals because they are forced into first heaven realities. They're going to have flesh forced upon them. Because, because listen what it says. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And then it goes on to say there was no more place found them for them in heaven. I didn't clip and paste fur enough down in the Scripture. They lost, first they lost their estate in the third heaven. Now they just lost their estate in the second heaven. Do you wonder why the Bible says that men's hearts fail them for fear of what is coming upon the earth? When these things manifest physically, they can't disappear. They can't go back to the second heaven and they're walking among men, extremely wrath, having lost a great battle. It is going to frighten men to death. And at the Valley of Armageddon, they are going to die like men. That's the reason why we have the struggle. That's the reason why we are having the wrestling today. They are trying to either impede that judgment... Or stop it altogether. That's why true biblical Judaism and biblical Christianity, they are attempting to expunge off the planet because every other religion, every other belief system falls under the auspices of a principality, power, ruler of darkness that one day will be cast into the first heaven. You know, I've said in my first book, The Shine Our Directive, if God could open us our eyes and that we could see the Valley of Armageddon, I don't think that Steven Spielberg or any of them, J.J. Abrams, any of them have the imagination. It'll make Star Wars look like a dull film. It'll make Terminator look like a dull film. Can you imagine the greatest satanic army that has ever been gathered on the planet with advanced weaponry, with watchers, with watcher technology, with giants, with dinosaurs as far as we know, with flying UFOs, even what we're seeing with CERN and the D-Wave computer where they're, where they're, and when, they, when they collide to create faster than life looking for the God particle. They're creating a Higgs boson, pre-Higgs boson particle known as a spacelet that there's nothing we can contain it with, so it, it goes down to the core of the earth. Many have speculated that if they get enough of those, it will actually turn the earth into a brown dwarf star. How many know that's a bad thing? But the other conclusion that many researchers have made, they're going to turn the earth itself into a particle weapon to aim at Jesus when he comes back. And how many know that it isn't going to have any effect? I think that we, 
don't have a big enough imagination to wrap our heads around the army of the son of perdition, Nimrod, to finish what he started at the Tower of Babel. With principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, watchers, all in flesh, standing there in battle array with a transugenic human horde that are demonically powered, waiting to do battle in the valley of Armageddon. And the Bible simply says, they'll be destroyed at the brightness of his coming. So the greatest, most powerful army ever created by uh, planet Earth and its history will last about one half a millisecond when Jesus comes back. How many are glad that that's the one you're serving? Now let's go to the happy part. Now them getting their comeuppance, that's happy for me. I'm going to be sitting on a horse behind Jesus, and he just wants us to witness how he fights for us. It doesn't actually say we get to lift the sword, shoot an arrow, pull out our favorite 45 or M16. We don't get to do any of that. He says, wife, just hold back for a second. I got a little something I need to do. And after he takes care of it, he says, won't you come on down because now you can labor with me in establishing my government upon the earth. Whew. I'm looking forward to that. If, you don't, if you're not happy on the inside, there's something really, really wrong. <laughs> I'm doing somersaults on the inside. Because after that day, there's no more mystery religion. Lucifer's thrown in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And the earth is going to have its Sabbath rest under the reign and rulership of Almighty God come in the flesh, Messiah himself. But I want you to see what happens with the second woe is passed and they begin going into the third woe. There's a declaration from heaven that is confirms going all the way back to what happened at the Tower of Babel. It also confirms what I just read out of Psalms 82, that he's going to receive the nations for an inheritance. And it says, The second woe was past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall rule forever. He shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders that sat before God on their seats fell on their faces and worshiped God. At that moment, every principality, power, ruler of darkness just lost their dominion. The God said, listen, I started with Abram, but I have a greater plan that I'm getting humanity back. That every nation, every tribe, every tongue will one day bow the knee and confess that Jesus is Lord. This is what they worship. They say, we give thee thanks, O God, Lord God Almighty, that art which wart which, and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. That sounds like a good worship service to me. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in the temple of the ark, the ark of his testimony. People want to know where the ark is? You can't find it on the earth. Indiana Jones can't find it. In fact, Jeremiah prophesied it was never going to be found. But here we find it. It's opened back up. The Ark of the Covenant represented God's rulership upon the earth. And there were lightnings and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail. And Jesus takes back this planet. Do we live like that? Are we living like he's coming back? Are we living like he's going to rule and reign? Are we living like he's going to judge these things that we're constantly wrestling with? What a relief it will be that we throw salt on a culture and the culture doesn't throw the salt back at us. In that day, the wrestling will stop. 
In fact, one easy thing is put into place, according to the prophets, that on the Feast of Tabernacles, if every nation does not send tribute to Jesus and recognize Him as King of the earth, that next year they have drought. How many know that's a harsh judgment? They don't need weather control. Jesus has said, it's not going to rain here, and it's not going to rain here, but everybody else is going to have all the rain they need so all the earth can be fed. You see, we're looking at things in America. We need to realize in the end, Jesus wins. And God is getting ready to release his fire. He's getting ready to release his power so that we can become salt and light again in the earth. And if there was ever a time for us to cry out for the fire of God, it is right now. In us. So that we can be his priests wrestling for the souls of men in the earth. You know, the only thing that you can take with you to heaven is your obedience and the souls of men that you won to Jesus. That's all it gets there. Your wealth, that new house you're wanting, that sports car you're wanting, whatever it is you're wanting, that new truck you're wanting, when all this happens, you're leaving all that behind, it won't even be a second thought. Fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.